Here I'm Jordan alongside Brian Logan. And back when Brian Logan was an aspiring D1 athlete who took a trip to Provo, and his host was one Jan Jorgensen, who joins us from Ephraim, Utah, Snow College defensive coordinator, BYU legend on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Jan, what do you remember about being the host for Brian Logan on his recruiting <laughs> trip to Provo? Whatever happened on that st trip stays on that trip, Jaron. All right, Brian, tell us. You didn't tell me that rule. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me that. I already kind of spilled the beans. Um, I'm, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid of what's, what's going to happen. I have one real memory that sticks out, but I'm afraid of what Brian's going to say. I, okay, okay. I remember. I remember. So it was I almost, ooh, I almost, I almost said a cuss word. It was really boring. It was really, really, really boring. <laughs> It was it was boring. <laughs> What'd you guys do? I got this okay, okay, I'll tell you what we did. Okay. So I need some defense here. Number one, Andrew Rich was your host the first night, right? And he was supposed to be Brian's host the entire weekend. Wow. And I did not know this. Up, something came up with Andrew. Andrew couldn't do it on Saturday night. So I get a phone call Saturday morning where it is like late. You know, because you you don't go with your host till dinner time, and I get a call somewhere time around noon saying that Andrew's gone. We have a recruit in town that needs someone to host him. Will you host him? And I had plans that night just to go hang out at my brother's house and watch the UFC pay per view that was happening. And so I was like, I guess I can just bring Brian with me, called up Max, had Max come over and me, Max, my brother, a couple of my brother's buddies, we watched the, the UFC. And I, I don't know how much UFC uh, Brian had watched. That was my at first one. Point. I had no yeah. clue what was going on. And last one? First, uh, I saw maybe one, one or two more okay. after that. They're fun. But, but it was, yeah. And, and I didn't know. I got to, I'm going to text Andrew after this, man, because I didn't know <laughs> that he bailed yeah. on me, which I'm happy you said that because for the last 10 years, I've been talking so much smack about you. Like, you're the worst <laughs> host. Like, it was the, I, 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 I tried so hard. Look, look, I probably would have been a bad host even if I had time to plan. Look, check this <laughs> out, man. I just remember, I just remember going in my, going through my head, like, don't fall asleep, 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 wake up, wake up. You wake were up. still, it, but it didn't stop you from coming look, here. Look, man, I, I went to the bathroom like five times just so I can get the blood flowing. You know what I mean? Just so I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't fall asleep, man. Yeah. So, but I, so I mean, I, I stopped giving you a hard time, but I do appreciate you stepping up, you know, and taking care of me. I'm glad I didn't scare you off. That's <laughs> yeah, that's it. It worked out. Uh, you, 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 uh, so I would say this, and this, and this would be a good, you know, kind of kind of transition. I, I think. I remember being in the car with you and having you know one-on-one -on -one conversations, and it was all business. Um, and I think more than anything, that that's what really inspired me. Um, and I could push aside, you know, the, the boring, you know, other things that was going on that night. And you, you, the, what you were saying, I mean, it just, it just reminded me of like, okay, this is, this is greatness. Like what you're about to walk into is greatness. And, and before anything, I had like this high expectation of, okay, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And I always had this chip on my shoulder during fall camp. Uh, to not let you guys down, you, uh, Max, you know, Dennis. So I appreciate that more That's than anything, man, is, is, is that the expectation that you guys have for the program and for any newcomers coming in. Well, I appreciate that. It's kind of the philosophy I take in recruiting right now. When I, when I talk to kids, I don't, I don't try to, I don't try to sell them. I basically say like, this is what this is all about. Like we're here to win football games. If you're here for to not work hard, you're, if your priority going to college is to live the, co the normal college lifestyle, like I tell them, it's not the program for you. But if you want to come, you want to win football games, you want to work hard and football in school is what's most important to you, then this is your place to be. And I mean, that's just kind of the approach I, I take because I think in, in your story right there, like Brian, real recognizes real, right? You can mm -hmm. tell when, People are BSing you and, you know, using the used cars, sales tricks and whatever. Like you go, you just be real with a person and you set the expectation. And then the right type of people, it'll scare some people off, but the ones that it scares off aren't the ones that you want. We're talking with the Janimal, Jan Jorgensen on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, you're down at Snow College. You're the d defensive coordinator. Yeah. You guys have this little, uh, the BYU homies are down there. Zach Erickson's the head coach. He played at BYU. Of course, Butch Pau 
is down there. Tanner Jacobson uh, left BYU as a grad assistant, and he's down there with the secondary. So you guys go all the way to the national championship game, man. You guys had a great season. What's it like with these BYU guys down there and that staff and your development as a coach and finding success? It's a lot of fun, man. Um, coaching coaching is a hard business. And just I think you guys know, have, know this in your work experience. Anybody listening knows it in their work experience. When you work with people you like, no matter how hard what it is that you're doing, you have a good time. And then if you work with people you don't really like, it just becomes miserable. And for us, I mean, we all get along really well. We all have similar, you know, personalities, goals. And so it's a lot of fun. And I think that's part of the success that we had this year is, you know, we all really like each other. We enjoy each other and we trust each other. And so it's, it was, it was, a, it was a very fun year. So for those who missed it, you go to the national championship game. You guys are up. Unfortunately, yep. you don't win. Uh, but what was yep. that season like as you guys nav- navigated COVID and nearly won the national uh, junior college championship? It was crazy. It was. See- it, it seemed like we were losing two and three starters every single week. It was. It was nuts. Um, we had a really tough schedule. We traveled, you know, to Pennsylvania. Um, took a twenty-four hour bus ride to Iowa. Went to Iowa three times actually, um, and it was it was a crazy season. It was really stressful, but it was the most rewarding football season I've ever been a part of, and um, very proud of our players and how they were able to overcome a lot of adversity and get to where they got. It was pretty cool. Wait, more than two thousand nine, Jim? Um, two thousand nine was pretty cool. I said, I, did I say? I, I meant to say as a coach. Oh, okay, okay. Thing. I was like, Brian's right here, Jim. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> what I. That was your favorite. That was your favorite season, right? Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine was definitely. I would say two thousand nine, two thousand seven. Those two seasons were my two favorite. It's hard for me to pick a winner out of those two, but they were both great years. Two thousand nine is a, clearly the the choice. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, so so obviously you know we're talking about defensive line and and just the defense as a whole. Um, when it comes to BYU going to the next level, the defensive lineman, what I said earlier was to for, for them to be more disruptive in the pass game, right? Um, they've been good, you know, in, in, in you know running the ball and, and run defense, I would say. Uh, but when it comes to that next level, right, um, taking that step, that's what I believe. Um, and, and also what I'm assuming is that in order to do that, you need to be more aggressive, calling more blitzes instead of, you know, dropping. So as a defensive coordinator, what 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 do you think uh, goes into your decisions of being more aggressive or, um, you know, kind of, you know, kind of kind of not taking taking the uh, foot off the pedal and, you know, dropping eight and being more, I would say, complacent? Yeah, I mean. The, the first thing that I learned as a coordinator, um, well, it's not the first thing I learned. Maybe it's been a hard lesson that I've learned, but I really learned it over this last year, is that as a coordinator, you have to be you. You have to be yourself. And by nature, I'm aggressive, right? Like, that's just me. And so for me to go and not be aggressive, I'm doing something that's, that's just not my personality. It's not who I am. So I learned that I have to go and be who I, who I am. So any coordinator, whether it's a little more conservative coordinator, whether it's you, if that's them, that's how they're going to be the most successful. Um, in terms of it's hard for me to speak to exactly what BYU does because I'm not in those, in those rooms mm-hmm. and what the game plan is, but I'm not just aggressive for the sake of being aggressive. I do drop eight at times. Like, I drop eight, I bring zeros, I do a lot of different things. And my my goal as a coordinator is I just want to keep you guessing. And even when I'm not being aggressive, I want you to think I'm being aggressive. And that's my general strategy. Now, BYU comes, they're a little bit more on the conservative side, which is not wrong. Um, but I think there's a time and place where you use that conservative part where you get teams get used to you being conservative and you use those opportunities to get aggressive and make big plays. So it's all about, you know, calculated risk and being smart with those decisions. But it's 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 not an easy thing to do um, for sure when it comes to coordinating a defense and, and finding that balance. What's your perception of BYU football right now, Jan, after, uh, you know, 
10 years of independence. This 10th year, obviously, COVID was a unique year. BYU took advantage. Zach Wilson's second pick. It was crazy. 13 dudes in the NFL from this team. Uh, what do you think of BYU football right now? I think last year was a very enlightening year um, in terms of where BYU is as a program, where they can be the most successful, where they can get the most national attention. Um, I think that was a, it was very enlightening um, in terms of the schedule that they had. I mean, it wasn't full of power five teams, but they were running the table and they had everybody on, you know, game day talking about them and everything instead of playing a murderer's row, the first six games and being 500 and nobody mentioning them. And so I thought that was very enlightening um, seeing the contrast, which we'd never really seen before. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting and I think it's in a good spot, man. I think they've done a good job recruiting over those last few years and you're kind of seeing it. I think when they first got in the, I mean, it's hard to find your groove in recruiting and find who your guys are and what you're recruiting to. And I think they found their groove and they know who they're going after and what they need to get, where they can get them. And I think you're seeing it pay off on the field, which is pretty cool. And there's a lot of, though you lost a lot of good players, there's a lot of good young talent to step up and, and fill those shoes. Hey, and maybe we'll see some snow college dudes at BYU. Who knows? Maybe I'm trying, man. I'm, I'm trying. I, my, my whole goal is to, to help my alma mater. Get that, get that pipeline going, man. We, we, we need more JC guys. Yeah, Brian, of course, would say that. And and I feel like we need to line up like an activity in E from where Brian hangs out with you, and it ends up being watching UFC. At yeah. the end of the night. It's probably going to be – I now have a child, another one on the way, and I, my life could not be more boring. So, <laughs> that, Look, man, I, I, I have two. I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. I'll bring them with me, and we can all be Do boring it. together. That sounds, sounds great. My life every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jane, it was great to catch up, man. Congrats on all the success uh, down at Snow with all the BYU guys. Tell them hi for us, and uh, thanks for the time, man. No problem. Anytime, fellas. Okay, that's Jan Jorgensen on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how.